Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the season finale of the Hoops All In podcast. I'm your host, Worlds Francois. We got Kane Legacy. We got Kyle Anthony. We're here to wrap up the 75th anniversary of possibly one of the greatest NBA seasons. We now have a champion has been crowned. The Golden State Warriors defeated the Boston Celtics in six games. Yes, I see you, Kyle. Um, 103-90 in game six. They have now captured their fourth NBA title in eight years. Now I want to ask you guys this question. Now with the Golden State Warriors winning another championship, what was your overall thoughts and reactions about this series? Did the Boston Celtics choke it away? Or was Golden State the overall better the be, or the overall better team? Excuse me, Kyle. I know this is your day. You got the Warriors hat on, so I'm gonna let you have the mic first. Go ahead, brother. Wow, thanks. he's gonna talk his cash. <laughs> Listen, I don't, and this is not you know me favoring one or the other, but you know the the question is is you know to say whether the Warriors were you know played well enough to win, or did they, or or is it because the Boston Celtics choked that they that they lost like it, that's like saying that they came into it and it was theirs to lose which I don't I don't believe listen they were both you know the best in their conferences and neither team I said this going in neither team was sweepable you know I knew that you know somebody was going to to lose you know both teams were going to lose at least once um but uh Honestly, I don't think that it's a matter. I think that the you know there's there's a there's something to be said for um, that been there, done that already. You know, and this core part of the Warriors team has been there several times. They understand the pressure of the moment, and and they've got that that pe- that championship pedigree. Uh, if anybody choked, I would honestly say it would it would have been the Warriors in the fourth quarter of, of game one. But other than that. I, I didn't see, you know, each each win was by double digits, which is interesting enough as it is. But I, I don't see that, you know, it's oh, they they won because Boston choked. I just think it's a matter of both teams played well, but one was really up for the challenge because they were more experienced in that moment in those under those circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, I have to agree. I mean, Warriors just overall more talented team. And you combine that with having more experience at this level, playoff level, late in the playoffs. You know, it went the way everybody expected. It it didn't go the way I was hoping, but it went the way everybody expected. So I admit it. Congrats to the Warriors, to the city by the bay, and to you, Kyle. (laughs) Congratulations. Wow. I mean, (laughs) you're you're like the the last man on the roster. (laughs) Hey. Hey, he's the honorary six man yeah, of the year. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you guys are both partially right and both partially wrong. My opinion is that your is, opinion? Yes, no, that's your well, opinion that we're opinion. partially right and partially yeah, wrong. Yeah, obviously, you, you okay. know, this isn't the word of God here, guys. We're not, okay. you know, spilling the gospel. <laughs> okay. But in my opinion, which I have facts to back it up, you guys are partially oh, okay. right and partially wrong. Golden State showed their championship DNA. Because they capitalized on Boston's mistakes. Okay, we learned two things in this series. One, Golden State, the dynasty lives on. And two, Jason Tatum is not that guy yet. Boston Celtics lost this series in game five. And for anybody who watched the game and played close attention to the game, here are the reasons why. Steph Curry did not hit a single three-pointer in that game, he was all of nine, seven of 22 overall finished with 16 points. If you told me that he was going to have such a horrible shooting night, that the Golden State Warriors were going to shoot nine of 40 from three as a team, that Marcus Smart was going to score over 20 points in that game. Jason Tatum was going to have 27. I would have told you Boston would have won and they would have closed it out in game six, but they did not. Boston got scared in the fourth quarter. They turned the basketball over. They did, it felt like the moment was too big for them. The turnovers hurt Boston way too much in this series. Boston had 18 turnovers to Golden State's eight. When you don't take care of the basketball, you're going to create fast break transition points to another team, thus bringing them back in the game. Game six, the nail in the coffin. 
Boston started out the game 12 and 4 in the first quarter. Golden State ended the first quarter 11 0 run. And they started the second quarter continuing on that run 21 to 0 overall. Turnovers again hurt Jason Tatum. They hurt Jalen Brown. They hurt the Boston Celtics. Every time Boston was building a little run and momentum, Boom, they will hurt, they will shoot themselves in the foot by turning the basketball over and let Golden State capitalize on a two for one possession. So, overall, Boston's mistakes hurt them in the end. Golden State capitalized, and there's a reason right now that they're a four time champs. Again, turnovers just killed them. Turnovers killed them. And right. when you're a young well, team, you don't know how to take care of the basketball. That's well, I was, say, and just like you said, you know, we were both partially right and partially wrong. I'll say the same thing to you, and it's not just, I, I, I feel that. When you can capitalize, not every time team can capitalize on the other team's turnover mistakes and, and ability, you know, prone to being turnover prone. Oh, rap, whatever. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But <laughs> point is, not every team can capitalize over that. It, you know, so, so the fact that they did, you know, uh, and still, I, I, I still feel like you're, you're not giving Golden State the benefit of the doubt that they would have won regardless you're saying that boston boston uh basically gave it away you know and and i i just don't a- agree with that you don't you don't win by turning the ball over as many times as they did what was it a minimum of 20 per game or something or whatever there's something they're average there but uh it's 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 really comes down to a combination of the two they were they they kind of did not rise to the occasion the way they thought they could or people thought they would and uh the golden state warriors did and they were able to show that they again they've been there done that they were more experienced in that moment under these circumstances and they won because of that not because boston was careless with that uh, or jason tatum was not the guy you know, there was a combination of things, I feel. Some of okay. what you said and some of what we said. That's see, it. See, 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 you showing your Golden State Warriors. No, 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 much. it's not. It's not. Way it's too not much at now. all. Listen, I, no. I gave them credit. Yes, they did. But also, Boston put themselves in that hole. Boston stole game one. Golden State came back and tied it up 1-1. And then they was down 2-1. Uh, yes, I'm aware. The I'm aware of how five, it <laughs> Game five is the pivotal game when you're in a 2-2 series. The Warriors was, was losing that game. Boston had the chance. If you have your star player and the team overall does not shoot well from the field, as a team, you have to capitalize on that. And soon as Boston got into the fourth quarter, they kept every time Jason Tatum would drop, turnover, Jalen Brown, turnover. What did they do? Three-pointer on the end then. Two point on the end, they get a foul and one. That's especially when you're away. That's going to hurt your momentum as a team to get back to two two to keep the game at a distance. Same thing would happen in game six. They started the game on a 12 to four run. What did they start doing? Turn the basketball over. Jason Tatum is doubling the corner. He turns the basketball over. Jalen Brown is trying to split the defense. He turns the basketball over. I'm like, how you guys get to the NBA finals and you don't know how to dribble? So you're saying Golden State basically won the championship because of Boston's turnovers, not because yes. they were talented, not because no, not, they were mainly there, that. They, they are a good team, but everybody who mentioned if you looked at how they played, they game won five, four out of Boston, seven games. They won four Boston out of six games. Because... Should have capitalized on that game, and that was the game that cost them the NBA title. That's okay. for a fact. You look at the number overall numbers; it favored Boston compared to Golden State, but who ended up taking in a W because there are mistakes. The you never know what's going to happen if you get to game seven. That's all I can say about that. It's it, it's oh. when you get to game well, seven, it's one, to, one. So you don't well, know. We, we don't have they, to they could have gone no into that. Seven. They could have gone to game seven and you don't know what would have happened. So you can't say this is when they lost the series and lost the championship. It, you just can't say that. Well, the numbers back it up. They did. The numbers, numbers based on six games. Hey, numbers don't lie. <laughs> Numbers, numbers number based lie. on six games, Listen, they're not based on men seven lie, games. Women lie, numbers don't. You go check I, the stats. Yeah, I know. And look I'm, at the I, game. I, I'm just glad you didn't bring out the tons and tons of paper because that's <laughs> not what we need to do right now. I don't anyway. need to. It's all up here. Basketball savant, baby. Um, so as we continue to talk about the Golden State Warriors, they are now on their fourth title. I want to ask you guys, is the Warriors dynasty now officially back after their fourth title win 
And where does this, where do you guys rank their dynasty among the other NBA dynasties? Um, well, I want to clarify something as a franchise, it's actually their seventh. It's only the fourth for the core members that we've been talking about all this time. Oh yeah. yeah, man. Fourth for the core. Yeah. My bad. Like in that time, seven man, four titles in eight years. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I wonder who the governing body is who decides how many championships it takes to be a dynasty, quote unquote, um, because people seem to be just setting it randomly. Um, listen, L.A. and Boston are tied in first place at 17 apiece. Mm-hmm. And uh, right behind them now is Golden State with with, with seven with the Warriors with seven because they weren't always in Golden State. So. You know, no one ever questioned um, people were calling Chicago a dynasty during the Jordan era. People were calling the uh, Spurs a dynasty during the Tim Duncan era. Um, And they have six and five, respectively. So, uh, yeah, I do feel that the Warriors are a dynasty. And I feel that with seven championships and including four in eight years, that speaks for itself. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think uh, if we're going by numbers, um, they're number three behind uh, Boston, LA. You know, put them third. Wow. Strictly by numbers. Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, in terms of numbers of overall championships, right? Mm-hmm. The numbers, like you say, Wells, the numbers, you mm-hmm. know, don't lie. Emotionally, for me, I would put them. Uh, yeah, I'd put them right up there with the uh, Chicago Bulls. I mean, they're not done. You know, the, the Golden State's not done. You know, so yeah, I mean, they're in the definitely in the top three or four of all time NBA dynasties. I would have to agree. Yeah, I think we all agree on this. Uh, there are dynasties, especially you know they could have been to eight straight NBA finals appearances if it wasn't for uh, Clay Thompson tearing his ACL in the 2019 finals. And Kevin Durant um, ended up tearing his Achilles and leaving the team to go somewhere else. So the only two years that they didn't make the playoffs, (laughs) the only two years, excuse me, that they didn't win the championship was either they didn't make the playoffs and they weren't whole as a team. So this is definitely a dynasty. And they're they're just they they're gonna be back and better next year and for years to come. Especially Steph is still in his prime at 34. Clay Thompson, who's gonna have a year under his belt, recovering from the Achilles and the ACL, he'll be back. He'll be more conditioned. Draymond Green, you know, he's gonna still be Draymond Green and talk a whole bunch of crap and get in people's faces. And they got the young guys backing him too. They're gonna re-sign Jordan Poole to a big contract extension. They're gonna re-sign Andrew Wiggins to an extension. So you got those two key parts who help you get to the playoffs and help you win a championship are going to be back. Now they got some decisions to make on Kevon Looney and Gary Payton, but for the most part, the entire, the most, the most important pieces to help them win the championship will be back. So I don't see Golden State really going anywhere. And if I had to rank them um, in terms of the all-time dynasties was the other part of the question. I would have them number five. They're definitely in the top five. Obviously you got to go with the Boston Celtics in the 50s and 60s when they won 11 championships in 12 years and they won eight in a row. They just dominated the 50s. I mean, we've never seen anything like this before. Number two, got to go with the Chicago Bulls from the 90s to the 98s. They went six from six, two different three-peats. You know, never seen lo- nothing like that in the modern era. Three, you got to go with the Kobe and Shaq era. They won a three-peat. They could have went to a four-peat if they had their friction and they, you know, the team just broke apart. And four, a lot of people are going to be surprised by this, but the San Antonio Spurs, they got five titles and six finals appearances from 98 to 2014. The only finals that they lost was that Ray Allen clutch three-pointer shot in the corner in the Miami Heat. Otherwise, they probably would have been six for six, just like the um, Chicago Bulls in terms of them and their finals appearance. So they got four titles, and uh, five titles, excuse me, in the six finals appearances for the Spurs and five, I mean, Golden State. When you win four titles in eight years, you can't discount their greatness, you know, especially they won before KD, they won with KD, and they won after KD. So, an honorable mention, you know, you could have mentioned the, the Rockets in 94, 95. They won back-to-back, but then, you know, the big bad man, uh, number 23, came back and put a hold to that. 
Same thing with Miami. They could have possibly went three for three or four for four if they didn't choke the first finals that, that they were together as a team and the last one to the Spurs. But yeah, the, the, the Golden State is it's a dynasty and they're going to be around for another five, six years and it's scary because everybody got to deal with them in the West for a long time. Mentioned, as I mentioned, Kevin Durant with the Golden State Warriors dynasty. Um, whose legacy was more impacted with the Warriors winning the title? Was it Steph or KD? And should Kevin Durant regret leaving Golden State? This was the biggest question after they won the championship. KD's name was trending worldwide over Twitter. Analysts, and it was all over the sports show. So I definitely want to get Kyle's opinion because, again, he is the the the, San, the uh, Golden State Warriors fanboy, and I want to know what he's got to say about that. Who who what whose legacy impacts this more, Steph or KD's? And should have KD regret leaving Golden State? Uh, you know, I think it impacts Steph Curry's legacy more because he's the one that won. You know what I mean? He's the the head of that that attack, the head of that snake on that on that uh, team. Um, he's the one that was playing, and he and for the Golden State Warriors. So that you know that cements his legacy, especially getting you know his first MVP Finals award and uh, the the new trophy uh, named for a best conference player um, uh, in in the Western Conference as well. So uh, should. Should Kevin Durant regret leaving? Uh, I mean, you'd have to you'd have to ask him. You know, I, I feel like he made his decision. It's not like he was traded away and then they won without him. And he, you know, he didn't want to leave. He made a choice to walk away. And, you know, there were there were whispers that, oh, you know, he didn't want to, he loved how they played, so he wanted to join them. But then he wanted to be the man. And then, you know, supposedly he, you know, suddenly it was like, oh, you know, I want to join my my buddy in, in Brooklyn. And then somebody else wanted to come and join their party, you know, uh, which was finally a party was, that was not on the dance floor of a strip club. You know, so, you know, you have to I mean, I don't think that. Uh, you know, Kevin Durant is, you know, an all world player and he, you know, he, he won, he's, he's, you know, considered one of the best players in the league. You know, that's the, him leaving a team and then they win a couple of years later without him after he won with them. I don't think that's going to ruin his legacy at all. He's a multiple all time all star um, and one of the best players in this generation. So I don't think that does anything to his his legacy. He might regret leaving there, but he I don't think he'll ever say that publicly or admit that publicly. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think uh, Steph's legacy is affected more because he added another ring and you know, like all the various titles that he got this year. So I mean, you know, Steph's the man right now. You know what I mean? And probably will be for years to come. Like that, at the end of the day, like Kevin Durant is a great player. So it's not like it's really going to impact his legacy like that. We're always going to talk about Kevin Durant, remember him as, a, him as a great player. But Steph Curry is a guy who came in and actually changed the structure of the game. Mm. You know what I mean? That's his legacy. Like kids are not coming up wanting to be Kevin Durant. They're coming up wanting to be Steph Curry. Mm. You see it on the courts all the time. Everybody's launching threes, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, that's what Steph Curry did. So as far as, like, impact, which is what I figured determines legacy, you know, you got to hand that to Steph Curry all day every day. You know, as yeah. far as whether KD should re regret it, it depends. I mean, he's making more money in Brooklyn. But, you know what I mean? Like, or, or am I wrong? You're, you're the basketball savant. I'm not here to argue that, you know, because his money ain't my money. I would assume why else leave to go to Brooklyn because he wanted to be the primary option on the team. I mean, oh, no, no, I was just saying about the I don't, I I don't steps care, like on I don't care about being the biggest goldfish in a small bowl. Yeah. I don't care. You know what I mean? So if that was his, his choice because he wanted to be the number one option, then he should have lived that out. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But again, like, I guess I get annoyed with these conversations because it's like 
there's a reason these are seven game series. All right. I can step on the court and I'm pretty good. You know what I mean? But I can get beat by anybody one-on-one in one game. <laughs> they're not going to take me seven games if they're not as good as me. Mm-hmm. You know, so at the end of the day, this, you know, like it's pointless to even debate this stuff because Golden State is the best team in the league and it will be for years to come. So I, I don't really care how Kevin Durant feels. About it. You know what I mean? It's, you know, like I just don't. Oh, he's going to get you on Twitter now. Oh, oh man. man. You just man. activated him. his Twitter I got, fingers. I got two dog thumbs, too. Like, <laughs> ah, I like, like that. Uh, like, and, I'm not a, and I'm not a Golden State fan, but, I mean, like, when it comes down to it, like, they're the truth. You know? Like, Brooklyn Nets were a, a lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so were the Celtics. So were the Suns. And I'm uh, fans of both of those teams, but wow. they were a lie. Yeah, the Suns were a lie. Of course I'm going to say that. Of course I'm going to say that. They actually choked mm. the Dallas. <laughs> who in this who, who who in the basketball world didn't think that it was going to be the Suns and the Warriors in the conference finals? Right. Everybody named moms. So the Suns were a lie. You know what I mean? I still love my boys, but they didn't live up to it. I'm just saying, like, if you want to hang out and you know knock back some beers, I'll chill with B <laughs> three. All could you, day, but could I mean, you please you call me? Let me know. Could you please let me know when that happens? Because I yeah. actually want to do that too. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> when you know, he gives book. you the call, please yeah. put me on. Oh, him on book. You know what I mean? Like I chill with them all day. They great guys, but like we talking basketball, and they didn't do. They didn't get the job done. Neither did the Celtics, and then that's damn sure did. You know what I mean? So like, come on, man. Like all this takes away. Talking about Kevin Durant takes away from the Warriors, and I'm not that dude. You know what I mean? I'm not a Warriors fan by any means, but I'm just not that dude. I'm not going to take right. away from what they did. They did an enormous thing this year. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? In the West. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I mean like comparing that. him to a guy, Kevin but, Durant, who played four games in the postseason. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> this postseason. And was, and was home. And I he's thought been, I was going for the throat, but see, he just – He's been he's yeah. been fishing for a long time. So, yeah, hey man, the Warriors. I mean, the Nets. They just they just extend their season by having four extra practices. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. All right. Yeah. And exactly. this is coming from a Nets fan. So, yeah, from a Nets fan, that. yeah. So you see where I'm coming from, like you know, you just can't argue. You worlds, you're the one that always says it. Like you can't argue facts. So like you can't. You know what I mean? Like there's no debate here. Like, these dudes are phenomenal. Shout out to Chris Chioso, who used to be on the Nets roster and now is just won a ring with the Warriors. <laughs> this oh, interesting man. fun fact there. Well, yeah, I'm sure that's fun for Kevin Durant. Yeah, <laughs> one more he'll tie KD and ring count. <laughs> Look, let me ask you. Let me throw the question back at you. Not to extend things, but right, where I was like, mm-hmm. to, so like the framing the question should KD regret it, right? Because I know you're gonna respond to that, but in your answer, consider you know. I'm asking you, like, to consider what was his priority? Yeah. Because I don't know. You guys could tell me if he's making more money in Brooklyn, if that was the issue. If it was just him being a number one player, he got that. So, no, right? But if championships are important, he should have kept his butt in the bay. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it depends on what his priorities are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I can't. I don't know how what Kevin Durant is thinking because he is a very odd person who's always responding back to somebody on Twitter. So I, that's like yeah. asking me, you know, I, just tweet I don't him, know. just tweet I him and find I'm out. Good. I, I don't, yeah, don't want to get attacked him. on Twitter. I'm good. I, I have I'm trying to build a reputation, not tarnish it before it even starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you be the good guy. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would. Well, he'll, he'll still find a way to attack me, even if I'm the good guy. I'll be like, "Hey, KD, I love you." He'll tell me to go fuck off. I'm like, "Okay, well, I guess I'm not a Nets fan anymore." <laughs> But uh, I mean, that's fan when I'm being a Kevin Durant fan. Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, um, tell me about it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, in <laughs> terms Jay-Z. of him, re- <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Sean Carter, Jay Z. All right. In terms of him leaving, should he regret leaving Golden State? If I was KD, I would. But also goes to show you the NBA media is a bunch of hypocrites because when he first signed with the team, in 2016. How many times did he heard you ruined the league? You should have never went there. You made the you made them unbeatable. You ruined the game of basketball. Blah 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 blah. And then Katie was like, "Okay, fine. Yeah, I don't respect my two championships that I won with them. 
I'm going to leave and go try to make my own and, and try to continue to grow my own legacy. So it was like, okay, he went there, he got killed for it, and then he left because people were saying, well, we won't respect your rings that you win, and he's still getting killed for it. So it's just like, I don't know what, about that, there's Rose. no happy Honestly, medium here. I don't, I don't argue with you on much because you just start throwing numbers at me, and I'm just like, I <laughs> but, <laughs> but at the, the end of the day, monster. right? Yeah, stat monster just drowns me, and I'm like, okay, you win. Like, just <laughs> I, I don't know anything at this point. <laughs> but, like, to that point, right, it wasn't Kevin Durant's fault if he went to Golden State to win a championship. He is not the person that came up with the concept of the super team. Mm. You know what I mean? Honestly, that big three that they formed in the Celtics in 2008 was responsible for every super team afterwards, including Miami, including mm. Kevin Durant and Golden State. It's not fair to put that blame on his shoulders. So I agree with you on that. You know what I mean? The media, we don't need to discuss how hypocritical the media is because if he left Golden State because being number one was more important than being on a championship winning team, then he disproves their point right there. He's not just signing up. just to, But that is kind of weak sauce on his part. If he left Golden State because he was sick of media criticism, man, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, do what you got to do. Yeah, you know, if he went all the way three thousand miles away to try to prove to the media, like the <laughs> me, if that, if that's a good way to go insane, trying to get the media <laughs> to be happy with you. They're never gonna be happy with you if it bleeds, it bleeds. Like, come mm. on, man. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. so if he did that, yeah, he should regret it. But not because he didn't win a championship yet this year. He should regret it because he was pandering to the media. Mm. So, so yeah. much for Mister Tough Guy Twitter, right? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, ooh. Well, tweet back, tweet back at ESPN, right? Mm-hmm. I'm saying, right? I, I'm not you got a point, you yeah. You I'm got a point. It. You got a point. No, I'm, I'm just, smarter with my money yeah. than he is too. So, <laughs> mm. no, you, yeah. yeah, no, I say you definitely got a point because it's like, oh, you went to Golden State, you ruined the league, you just made a team that won 73, that went 73 nine mm-hmm. unbeatable. And then he won two championships, was the finals MVP. And it was like, okay, well, you guys still not give me my respect. So I'm going to leave and try to do it my own. And then they went, it's like, well, damn, KD should have never loved. So I was like, yo, what, 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 what is with the, the total hypocrisy, yeah. double, st- the double standards? Because so, yeah. You said it on, 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 on the Hoops All In page this week. Well, we mm-hmm. said it <laughs> through you. You know, the truth <laughs> of the matter is that Golden State was a winning team regardless. They were a winning team before KD, during KD, and after. Mm-hmm. So yeah. him going there to kind of like, oh, we're going to form some super. They were already a super team. Mm-hmm. They just did it organically. Yeah. As yeah. organically as you can, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, like him getting the blame for being, you know, forming up a super team is ridiculous. Because think about it, right? Oklahoma City, right? I mean, uh, you know, like, come on, man. The Thunder was a super team. If you take James Harden, Kevin Durant, and, um, Russell, Russell Westbrook, Russ. put them on one team, you automatically feel like that's a super team. You know, like, come on, man. He, you know, like, he, if, 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 if that was the case, if he just wanted to be around a bunch of other star players, you know what I mean, to get the rack up the victories, the Thunder was doing that. They just couldn't close. So he went to Golden State because he was sick of being a contributing player to a team that couldn't close the deal. I don't blame him for that. Not at all. Yeah. Especially since he saw everybody else doing it, and the more championships you get, the more endorsements you get, the better your money goes. So I don't yeah, blame true, him for true, that true. at all. True. You know, it was ego. Yeah, he he fell victim to his ego. I don't want people to criticize me. Like, good luck. You in the public eye, bro. That's yeah, true. I, I feel like also coming from NBA legends too, like Charles Barkley said, he was on ESPN and he said, well, Katie's got to win a championship now to validate Charles his Charles Barkley can shut up because he never won a championship. I don't want to hear <laughs> Oh, whoa. It's true. Oh, damn. He talks a lot about what it takes to win championships. I don't take it, uh, uh, money advice from a homeless person. <laughs> but why am I going to take a championship advice from Charles Barkley? Damn. I just want to. I'm in I a just, bad mood, I think, over these guys. Like, I just. Know, like, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are right. It's always just putting me in a bad mood. You got all these talking heads because nobody knows what they're talking about. Anybody can say anything. It's what you do that matters. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? If Kevin Durant had won, at least made it to the finals, we'd be having a completely different conversation. Right. So at the end of the day, it's not a matter of him going to Brooklyn. It's a matter of the fact that he, he didn't do what it took for his team to win. That's the issue. 
Mm-hmm. Right? You wanted to prove a point. You did a terrible job doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Charles well, Barkley to Katie's did. point about that, like I said, he didn't really have a full team, and he didn't know that he was going to go in such a wonky situation. He was like, hey, I'm going to play my boy Kyrie. Then you have unforeseen circumstances that show up. It's like, well, damn. They really, they really only been together for two years. I don't know what people like. Oh, you, you only won one playoff series in your three years in Brooklyn. They've been together for two solid years. The first year, we all know, Katie was rehabbing from that Achilles. That first year was a wash. The second mm-hmm. year, Kyrie Irving sprains his ankle, and James Harden is playing on one leg because he went to the strip club too many times and 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 messed up his hamstring. So it was literally Katie by himself going up against the eventual champions, the Milwaukee Bucks, in 2021, and he was a toenail away from beating them single-handedly and going to the NBA Finals. So a lot of people are just saying, well, Katie, you messed up your legacy, blah, blah, blah. Like you mentioned, Charles Barkley, obviously, Charles Barkley is an all-time great player. But, you know, he does say some things that are outrageous. Like I said, I I, I agree with you on that, and I agree with both of your points on that. I don't think his legacy is going to be tarnished to the point where he's still Kevin Durant, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day. My point but is that he wanted mm-hmm. to be the guy, and he wasn't the guy. But, Not okay. this year. But I want to ask you, okay, quick question before before we move on. Who was the best player on that team when KD joined? Was it Steph or KD? Because everybody knew when KD joined the Golden State Warriors, he was the de facto. Quincy Carter, he was Mason, Shaquille Goodwin. Others. He was the de facto. Sorry about that. I know. I know why Google's listening. But when yeah, Katie joined in the Warriors, that? he was the de facto best player on that team. Everybody knew that. Uh, Steph was Steph was homegrown because he was drafted. But we all knew. Can't okay, come on. We all knew Katie was the best player on that Warriors team. All right, based upon his number lines, yeah. I mean, I can't disagree with that, right? Like his stats. Yeah. So, but, but I'm going to your point because it's like what, most, what people again, say. Worlds, like I ask you, most important, most he was the best player in what sense? Just the stat line, of course. But he's going to be the most best player on 90 percent of NBA teams. You know what I mean? Like, well, I can't even. I can say almost 100 percent, right? He go to Phoenix tomorrow. He's going to be the best player on that team. Doesn't mean they're going to win a championship though. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, what's what's more important, your stat line? Well, ask Russell Westbrook what's more important, your personal stat line or your team championships, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, you're right. But is it about rings or is it about him just wanting to be the man? Because this sport requires five people on the floor. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I just – and you're right. He almost beat Milwaukee single-handedly. I, I, it was an, amazing to watch. But the problem there is he wasn't a leader for the Brooklyn Nets. When you're the best player, it comes along with the responsibility of leading the rest of the team. Am I wrong? Yes, right. Oh, you're right. He was never a leader. He was never a leader. All he did was complain. (laughs) That nobody else was stepping it up. But that's between you and your team. Lead them. They were, I bet you that the Nets players were cheering when they heard Kevin Durant was coming to town. Like finally. We're going to start making some noise. Why? Not just because he's a great player, but when you see a Michael Jordan or a Steph Curry, you expect them to come in and lead that team to victory. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think Steph Curry is a better overall player to me because Mm. for me, winning matters more than my personal stat line. I want to fall in to win, rain to win more than I want to be the MVP. Mm. Okay, we will touch on this in a, uh, a little bit. It's something that Steph- I'm a little passionate about because I believe in team over individual. Right. Yeah, in no, a of lot course, of cases, no, definitely. You know what I mean? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. No, for sure. But I'm gonna say this: one of the best. He's always gonna be one of the best individual players on uh, on the planet. Yeah, I'll yeah, never yeah. Take yeah. that away from him. Yeah. You know? No, for sure, for sure. I- I'm gonna well, say who this: Who would I know, take I- on my team? Right, if we phrase it that way, I would take Steph Curry any day because he's gonna build a better team. He's gonna lead that team. Mm. You know. I'll say this before, uh, so we move on. Um, Curry built the bus because we all know the whole bus driver thing that Charles is talking about. <laughs> Curry built the bus. He was driving the bus. He got stuck in the road. Katie came in and fixed it. They went on a good run for three years. Then Katie was like, I don't want to ride y'all no more. Steph redesigns the bus, and they continue to glory after that. So, you know, they both got their championships. Both are great players. Now, but do you guys he, think Steph is now an all-time top 10 player with his fourth yes. title and finally securing his finals MVP that I didn't think was so important for him to be, you know, legitimized as one of the all-time greats? But, you know, the media, there you go. 
<laughs> like, for real. I didn't know. I, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know that Steph Curry had to win a Finals MVP for him to be seen as an all-time great. Like, yeah. what do we? What a Finals MVP? This man's a two-time league MVP. Go ahead. Go. Go ahead. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Somebody goes first. That's why. I, that's what. This is. This is why we're doing this so we can change yeah. uh, a BS narratives like that. But go I ahead. agree. Uh, I definitely feel that when you are somebody who is literally a game changer, then you should be definitely and and a champion on top of that, multiple champions on top of that. I think uh, you are definitely uh, one of the top ten greats. I don't I don't see why not. You know what I mean? And I could sit here, you know, to me that's fact. You know, I could I could speak about anybody you know, a team that I, I do not follow I do not like and say the same thing if there was un, if it was the same circumstances hey you know you change you literally have have revolu- have changed how the game is played and who aspires to to play the game coming up yeah. from behind behind you so yeah how, how could you not how could he not be yeah I mean you got Dr. J that yeah. took the game above the rim right mm-hmm Michael mm-hmm. Jordan has changed the game. Kobe continued that. You know, after that, who has made a, a, a more fundamental change than Steph Curry? Right. You know, so yeah, he needs to be in the top ten. Yeah, I was well. First, as I went on a rant, I didn't think Steph Curry needed a Finals MVP to validate himself. I mean, especially when you're two time back to back league MVP for a season of 82 games, the only unanimous MVP ever. I don't think a damn finals MVP needed to validate you as all time great, especially like you mentioned, guys, you guys mentioned everybody is shooting threes from half court because Mm -hmm. of stuff. So that's one. And two, when I'm talking about how are we judging all time greats? Are we judging them based off championship rings, impact, or overall resume? Because if we are, Steph Curry is in that conversation. I mean, you look mm-hmm. at the top 10. Kobe, he got five championships. LeBron, he got four. Mike, Michael okay. Jordan, Air Jordan, he got six. Russell got 11. Tim Duncan got five. Magic got five. Bird got three. You know? I mean, there's not much other players ahead of him who has more titles. Mostly everybody has the same amount of rings as yeah. Curry. So he's got four titles. So And, and there's two things that the rest – don't have that step does, as I mentioned, the unanimous MVP, the only unanimous league MVP, and the fact that he changed the game how basketball is played. Mm-hmm. So when your resume reads four-time champion, finals MVP, all-star game MVP, Western Conference finals MVP, you know, he's part of the 50-40-90 club. He, he is the number one leader in three-point shots made. And he's only going to continue to add that. It's not like Steph Curry's retiring next season. He's only 34. He has legit four to five years at high level playing basketball lift left in him and how the Warriors roster is constructed that can extend to possibly six to eight years because they got Jordan Poole, Wiggins and all those young guys who could take the load of him as Steph Curry enters his latter years in his career. So Steph could continue to add to that resume. I don't know who won another league MVP. He could, but I don't know, considering how deep the West is with guys like Ja and all those types of Ja, Jokic and all that type of stuff. But Steph Curry, he can make another four straight all-star appearances. He can win another all-star game MVP. He can win another Western Conference Finals MVP. He does he does not need to add any more to his rank count. You got four championships. You're tied with Shaq, who's the most dominant player that we've ever seen in our league. Because like what the what else do I need to do? My resume is if not compared to all the high greats, if not better than them. So I'm good. And I feel like right now, resume wise, yes, Steph Curry is a top 10 player for looking at his resume. Impact wise, yes. Some people feel like he may need to add a couple more. I don't know what more do you need to add for him to be, you know, for him to be even more validated. But I'm looking at those two out of three things, as I mentioned, you know, resume, championship rings, impact on the game. He fills those categories, those boxes. So I don't see why you got to put him in. But now here comes the other question. And, you know, I don't want to take too long on this. Who do you take out? Because most of you guys have your top tens. Obviously not in order, but like you got to take somebody out there and put Steph Curry in. Do you take out Will? Do you take out Olajuwon? Do you take out Shaq? Do you take out Kobe, even though that's blasphemous? But somebody's got to get out that top 10 to make room for Steph. Well, Steph's been on my top 10 list as long as I can remember, honestly. So even in the early days in Golden State, I just knew he was going to be on the top 10. 
So I've always had that spot help. With that, so <laughs> when did you put Steph Curry in your top ten? Like a couple years ago? Uh, no, I'm t- even before they, he started winning the rings. I just knew he was going to be a top. When I officially did it, oh, that, you knew, you know but you I mean? didn't but officially knew, put yeah, him on could, your top ten. Tell. Yeah, I could tell. I could tell. You know, no, but, but, uh, right, so my you, top ten favorite players. He was no, 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 top one. ten. We're talking yeah. about top ten players of all time. Oh, of all time, um, I'm sorry about that. I misunderstood. Oh, how about this? He was well, always one of my top ten. Top 10 no, player. no, he was always one of my top ten players. I knew he was oh, going okay. to win. You know what I mean? It, I, I just am not a Golden State Warriors fan for whatever reason. You know what I mean? But um, as far as like who do you take, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't. I've never listed out my top ten of all time, so I don't know. I'd like to know who, 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 who people are going around. to make it today, I'd have to have him on. You know, it, it all comes back to the original debate. Who are the top ten? You know what I mean? Everybody, you ask different people, they're always going to be, they're always going to give slightly different answers. So, you know, to remove somebody, well, everybody's going to vote for somebody to be removed, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. You know, and why does there have to be ten? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just one of those things where it just makes for interesting dinner conversations mm-hmm. and bar conversation, but it really is irrelevant in terms of history, you know, because we're talking about extremely talented athletes over yeah. the years, course of 75 years playing this sport. Yeah. Uh, interesting conversation. We will continue to talk about it down the line. And I believe all those other sports shows will continue to talk about it because the NBA, season is over sports is dry in the summertime so they will either talk about lebron mj or they're going to talk about the wars winning the title for another two weeks but yeah that's it <laughs> so now obviously we got to talk about the other team that lost the nba finals first of all shout out to the boston celtics on having a tremendous season they turned it around after the all-star break Jalen brown tweeted the energies about the shift and boy did the energy shift nobody uh, imagine them making it to the NBA Finals, considering the season, as I just mentioned, that they started. But Celtics, congratulations to them. Jason Tatum, Jay LeBron, they're going to be, if not already, stars in this league. But I want to ask you guys this. So what is the Boston Celtics' outlook in the future? Can they come back in the Finals? or And what changes do they need to make in the offseason to put themselves in another um, championship title contention? I think that they should... I. I, I... They could use some more help on the wings, um, but I don't see a whole lot. Uh, I mean, you know, obviously health has a, a plays a big part in it. You know what I mean? You're talking about Williams was, you know, everyone was constantly talking, you know, about his knee. You know, uh, Al Horford is getting up there, although he's still, you know, he's he was never a true center, but for some reason people have always considered him a center. Uh, but you know, listen, you, I, I think they need a little more help on the wing, and I think they'll be they'll be fine. But uh, you know, uh you could they could they could use some little strength in their bench also. Yeah, I agree. I think uh I think the only thing I would add to that is that they can actually they have youth on their side, they can actually become better, mm-hmm. you know, wing players sweat the floor, so you know, but I think uh, they keep running it back for a while. How long is uh, Horford's contract for? Yeah. I think I don't really know off the top of my head. He could be a free agent after this year because I know he was on a four-year deal hmm. with the Philly, with the Sixers, and then he got traded to Boston because they were just too congested in the paint with Embiid and Simmons. And then he went to OKC, then he came back to Boston. So I believe he might have been like an expiring contract. I don't know. That's just off the top of my head. The last time I was looking at Holford's pockets. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it'd be hard to, I think with everything he bought to the season this year, it'd be hard to replace him. You know, but I don't think, uh, I think the Celtics will get better and better over time as long as, as long as they don't blow off the nucleus. They'll be all right. Hmm. Yeah. No, I, I think they, well, First, I, I have to mention, well, I don't like when people say, oh, you guys will be back because you don't know when you'll be back, especially in the NBA game. You know, it takes a lot to win a championship. Obviously, you need talented players. You need chemistry and you need a little bit, if not a lot of bit of luck to go your way. We looked at the 2012 OKC Thunder team. Everybody thought that they were going to be back. That was the only trip to the NBA finals. When you have mm-hmm. Kevin Durant, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, ownership decides not to keep James Harden. They say we go with uh, Russ and KD. 
never went back there again. You got KD ends up leaving. Russ ends up getting traded. And now they're in the lottery, you know, picking top five every single year. So I don't like when people say, you'll be back. You never know when you're going to be back. Same thing with Cleveland. After yeah. when Kyrie said, you know, I'm out of here. Yeah, they had LeBron James for another year. But we all knew LeBron James without Kyrie and having Kevin Love and Kyle Korver as your third best player was not enough to beat Golden State with KD, Steph, Clay, and Draymond. So, you you know, you don't know when you're ever going to get these opportunities to be back in the NBA Finals. Yeah, you're a young team, you're an upcoming team, and you're, you're going to continue to get better, but you don't know a lot goes into winning a championship. Um, so I just want to say about that. But here are two things I feel like the Boston Celtics could do to help um, to, to help boost their chances of going back to the NBA Finals in the future. One, they need to go to Walmart. They need to go to the sports section. And you know those little eyeglasses that they have that they sell for $15 where you can't see the floor when you're dribbling? They need to buy that because Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, and Jason Tatum cannot dribble the basketball. As I mentioned earlier in the show, every time they were trying to dribble to the basket, they ended up turning the basketball over. Jason Tatum, he had 100 turnovers in this postseason. I believe that's the record. I don't know. But that's, that's, that's horrible. For one NBA player to have 100 turnovers, in a single postseason, that goes to show you need to work on your handles. Same thing with Jalen Brown. If you watch the game, how many times he's trying to split the defense, Draymond Green just steals the ball from him. Andrew Wiggins whacks the ball out of his hands. So that's what they need to do. They, they need to work on their handles, you know, do them little things, go inside the court, go to the basketball and Celtics facility, and just practice dribbling all day long. That's one. Two, I think that they need to trade Marcus Smart, and here's why. In the games when I was watching, there was nobody really to set up their offense. Most of the time, they went iso ball. They put the ball in Jason Tatum's hand at the top of the key. He's trying to go iso ball. You, you're not gonna play. You're not gonna win playing isolation basketball against a very good defensive team uh, in Golden State. Same thing with Jalen Brown. So they didn't have a traditional point guard who could set everybody up in spots and tell them, "Hey, you go here, you go here. I'm gonna get you open shot." You know, this or that nature. Marcus Smart's not the guy. He's a great defender, but I don't feel like he's a traditional point guard that could put him over the hump now that he won defensive player of the year you could get a lot more from him because his value has increased so he'll be interested if boston decides to put him on the trade market maybe you could get somebody who's a great point guard i don't know who's out there but you know somebody who you know that hey we're gonna get eight assists from you at night and we we could get you you could get us along with 15 points but i feel like those are the two things boston needs to do and now obviously you know continue to bolster bench they was only playing seven eight guys in the postseason now yeah that's natural but when you have your two top guns and, and, and Tatum and Brown playing 44 plus minutes a game, that's going to tire out everybody. I don't know why coaches do that, especially if you have a deep bench, utilize your bench, even though, you know, they're, they're not going to be too impactful in that game. You use those players, throw those bodies out there to give those guys a couple of minutes of rest because they're going to need those legs in the fourth quarter. And if you're playing your guys all minutes, all 48 minutes, they have no breather. They just done and win it. So, but those are the two major things. They need to get some eyeglasses and learn how to dribble. And I believe that they need to put Marcus Smart on the trading block to see what kind of point guard that they could get out there for him in return. Damn, no oppositions? Oh, wow. Maybe I'll I mean, as long as it's not Russell Westbrook, I'm good. I mean, Ain't nobody want Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Glad we're in agreement on that one. Ain't nobody want Russell Westbrook. Come on, man. Oh, oh well. Yeah. I mean, I think all right. Um, this glasses thing was a bit harsh, but okay. It's I'll take, true. I'll take oh, it like bro. a man. <laughs> man, listen, these these guys are getting paid millions of dollars. I think they'll be fine with going to Walmart and buying a twelve dollar pair of glasses. Especially, come on, man, turn up. I, I could dribble better than them right now, and that's not overstatement. A hundred turnovers in the postseason, really? Mm. Well, these are the things that practice is for, and co coaching staff is for, and working on the off season is. These are things that can be addressed there. If you don't, if you're the kind of player who doesn't think you need to work on anything, then that's a problem. So if they come back next season and they're <laughs> they're averaging 18 to 20 turnovers a game, then you know who did their work and who didn't. That, that happened um, earlier that we want to talk about real quick before we uh, continue the show. Um, Kyrie Irving and the Brooklyn Nets have reached an impasse in their contract talks, according to Sham and Adrian Wojnarowski. So now Kyrie Irving could opt out his contract June 29th or June 30th and become an unrestricted free agent 
and leave his man seven behind and leave the Brooklyn Nets if they do not agree to a max extension. Obviously, they could do it down the line if he's a free agent, but they were trying to get Kyrie locked up and talks of impasse. And now there's been, you know, um, rumors and speculations out there that the Lakers and the Knicks and also the Clippers are expected to pursue Kyrie Irving in free agency if he does opt out. So I want to ask you guys this question. Should Kyrie Irving leave the Nets or should the Nets give in and give Kyrie the full max extension? <laughs> Kyle, I'm going to give it to you because I know you were chomping at the bit for this. Go ahead, man. Take it away. Listen, you know, this is a man who walked away, who wanted out of Cleveland after he won the championship there, who stood in center court and pledged his undying devotion to Boston and then left there and said in his post game press conference that basically, you know, he would be the one to help shape this team and run the team and, and, and so forth, uh, you know, Listen, we all know at this point that Kyrie is a very uber talented man, basketball player, but he makes a lot of questionable decisions. He has a very odd perspective on a lot of things, and it affects his basketball um, priorities. Sometimes I think that his basketball priorities are not as high as they should be. You know, uh, listen. At this point, talent, you know, talent can take you, but so far, you know what I mean? You have to have the work ethic. You have to have the availability. You have to have the, it has to be your top priority when you are playing, especially when you are, you have an employer, you have a contract and you're making a lot of money. I think a lot of teams are going to be privately, at least they're going to be, kind of really scared to even jump into that and be afraid that they'll be the next Cleveland, Boston, Brooklyn left in Kyrie's wake. You know what I mean? You know, if you want locker room drama, if you want um, somebody who is going to miss a good chunk of the season for one reason or another, or, uh, you know, somebody who claims they probably don't necessarily need a coach as long as your top players are on point. Um, if you want a player who is going to, you know, publicly call out his teammates, hey, then he's he's your man. <laughs> hey, go for him. You know what I mean? But, you know, I, I think it would do him some good to go to a, a bottom feeder team just to see what it's like. You know, to really realize, OK, you know what? You're not just going to constantly get everything handed to you and, and it's not always going to constantly go your way. Play team ball, think in team mentality, be a leader and stay on the court when you're supposed to be on the court. And, I, you know, I, I don't think the Knicks would go after, uh, you know, it's nice news, little news flash and everything. And for a second, my ears perked up and I'm like, you know. Coach Tibbs would pull out all the rest of his hair by by you know after the first after the first ten games. There's no way, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I think it'd be really entertaining if he went to LA though. Oh yeah, right. not not the Clippers but the Lakers. <laughs> that would be oh man, wow, that would be perfect. Like I would, would be watching every LA game at that point. Uh, yeah, Perfect. that would yeah, that would just be yeah, that would you people would confuse that with the Reality the show TV. that's on 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 HBO Max right now about the, yeah. <laughs> I think that's what would happen. Yeah, reality TV. Would Is be, this real? TV. Am I really yeah. seeing this? <laughs> <laughs> I think the behind the scenes. I would be, would be far more, more interesting. Yeah, bigger, more yeah, more interesting. Yeah, that's yeah, when actually. the real game starts. Yeah, behind in the Lakers locker room. I ain't got nothing to have beyond that. Yeah. Oh, this is tough for me because I'm 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 a Nets fan. I'm a Kyrie supporter, but man, I couldn't tell. Okay, here here see the Nets. They are in a very very tough predicament because if you do not bring Kyrie Irving back, you're gonna piss off that seven foot monster in KD. And when the Nets 
got KD and Kyrie Irving, they were a package deal. Kevin Durant is wearing a Brooklyn Nets uniform because of Kyrie Irving. Kyrie convinced him, yo, let's go to Brooklyn. Let's create a culture. Let's start something over there besides going to the Knicks that already have a fan base, that already have a culture. May not be a winning culture, but they still have a popular culture. So it's like, okay, you let Kyrie walk, you could potentially lose that on KD and Kyrie in one offseason. Because if Kyrie doesn't come back to the team, who's to say Kevin Durant doesn't go to front office and be like, get me out of here. I want to trade. Send, send me back to Golden State. Uh, he, man, I mean, he's like, hey, look, we'll take Wiggins and Poole and whoever else. Oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> Hold on. No, no, no. Hey, for KD? I will storm the, I will storm the gates. I'll be a one-man riot. Oh, no. Come on, time out, time out. Side conversation. <laughs> you mean to tell me if the Nets came to you, you Golden State Warrior fanboy, if they came to you Listen, say, so hey, you're going to get... trade two Hold players that have, that have really contributed this, this past season, especially in the postseason, that are younger – to go get this guy who so, left you so, in the first place? Man, you must be fooled because anybody presenting to you, hey, we want KD, wants to go to your team, and we have KD available. You want to make an offer to trade? Well, listen, him? that's the same argument with, with Kyrie, right? You're going to have somebody who's going to be like, oh, hell yeah, we can deal with all the drama that comes along with him. Oh, 30 him. teams in the NBA are going to trade for KD. What do you mean? It's because Kevin Durant. That's maybe what I'm saying. Maybe 29 saying. teams. I mean, like, yeah. I no, think oh, yeah, that, uh, the Nets, yeah. <laughs> No, 28 then. Like we, I think on, that uh, I don't think Golden State would ever, ever, ever. No, honestly, I think Suns would be better off doing mm. that, you know, but that would be an interesting team. No, no, thanks. We, we don't want DeAndre. Y- y'all could keep, y'all, you could go somewhere else to like the Magic. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we are KD for eight. What? Well, listen. What are we trying to go back enough. in a lottery or something? Well, listen. Fair you, enough. You, 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 know, know. you know, the only two unre- irreplaceable t- uh, pieces out there. So. Well, listen, you know, you, you, the, the Nets still have Ben Simmons, so don't fear. Don't fret. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, not that's, uh... that's not funny. <laughs> ben Simmons, ben, that's not ben, funny. Ben, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's it's tough, man, because like I, said, I was looking at how many games Kyrie played in a Nets uniform, and he's missed 123 games and played 103. Now, we all, again, we're not trying to talk about Ooh, the backs Kyrie? or anything. Yeah, Kyrie. Because yeah. I was watching first take Stephen A. Smith and Kendrick Perkins, who's been getting on Kyrie Irving's ass this whole year, even said the vaccine thing was stupid. So I'm not gonna go with that conversation. Go look it up. And again, <laughs> it was. But taking out out taking that out the factor, Stephen A. brought up some good points. He's like, you know, take out the vaccine out. Last year when COVID happened, they went in the bubble. Kyrie said, let's not play in the bubble. That could have caused not only him. But other NBA players, a lot of money. You know, the first year, you get hurt. Year two, KD comes back. You take two weeks off, and we see you out partying with your family. And then you need another couple of weeks off because you were traumatized by the riots. And then you decide not to show up for a couple more games. So Kyrie, I mean, you don't, brother, man, you you, you do not have a good reputa- reputation, especially as you mentioned, Kyle. Boston, you said, hey, I want to stay there. But then you you don't return any of the Boston Celtics calls if they're trying to talk about contract extensions for you. You don't return none of their calls. You He's leave a liar. LeBron James high, <laughs> You leave LeBron James high and dry. And it's like, yo, Kyrie, man. People are really questioning, okay, because he said, hey, I'm not leaving my man seven anywhere, but Looks like you might because we all knew. Listen, the Nets are like we will. We're not gonna give Kyrie Irving a four year deal, and I I even said that too. If I'm the Nets, I don't give him a four year fully guaranteed deal. I'll give him a four year deal, but it has to be incentive. Like, hey, you need to play sixty plus games to get your full money. And if he doesn't not want to agree with that, then like, what do you do? But you, you know, you're you're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if you know if you if Kyrie leaves, you you gonna piss off KD. So it's kind of like we all know the NBA is a player driven league. You don't want to set a bad example as a franchise to give into a player's demands who, for more reasons than not, has not been fully reliable towards you. And he was the main reason why this team got assembled. So I, I don't, really don't know the answer for the Nets. I, I, one part of me says, hey, you know what? Because you don't want to lose KD and piss him off, just give him the max. But if you do give him the max and say he decides to take two weeks off because for personal reasons or whatnot, or you didn't feel like coming to work, then you just Katie's out there balling up by himself with Ben Simmons, and he just like, bro, I didn't come to Brooklyn for this. We came to Brooklyn to win a championship. 
and you're not even out here helping me out. And they ain't no, they ain't no mandate stopping you. So like, bro, come on, you know what I'm talking about? So it, it, it's, it, I don't really know the answer. It's a tough situation for the Nets, but I'll tell you what, I mean, if he does decide to walk, you're going to be getting a guy on his last three seasons, average 27 points a game and was part of 40, 50, 90 club wearing that uniform. Just saying, but his a hundred percent full in participation is a question. And this is coming from a Kyrie fan. Kyrie can't be taking no two weeks off no more, bro. Like, I don't know what else to tell you. You it's look bad in these streets. <laughs> no, okay. Okay. I, two I, weeks I, here, two weeks there, two weeks. Yeah, there. it's like two weeks every couple of months, no? <laughs> you know, listen, all I can say is I'm sure Kevin Durant knows how flaky he is. Friend or not, personal connection off the court or not, he's got to know that how flaky he is. So he, he, he knew what he was getting into, and now he knows what he's in. And, you know, listen, if he wants to leave because the Nets decide they don't want to keep his boy, hey, what does that mean? I mean, you know, you're still getting played to play ball and you're doing it pretty damn well. And you're not missing yeah, games but yeah, because but, you, don't yeah, wanna, you, you, you don't feel like you playing. The, yeah, but you put the Nets in a really tough rebuilding situation for years to come because they traded all their assets to get them. Especially no. they traded even more assets to get James Harden, which Kyrie and KD wanted. That's the next way they, because is, they've done this before. They did that with Paul Pierce and Kevin Durant, yeah. Kevin Garnett, and, and Kevin Garnett. They yeah, mortgage their future. They 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 like going for the big swing. So you know they know what they what um what the chance of the risk is. What, what is Kyrie expressing interest to leave Brooklyn? I know that they're not having progress on the talks, but is he saying he wants to leave Brooklyn? From what Sham said, because I read his tweet, his article that he posted on Twitter, Kyrie wants to stay in Brooklyn. I mean, he chose to come to Brooklyn because he that's close to Jersey. He lives in Jersey, and he just goes across the bridge to, he, to play um, in front of his family because his family all lives out in Jersey. And Kyrie must say, hey, I want to stay here. With the exception but, of this last year, of course. Yeah, with the, yeah again, no, our vaccine man it aside. Um, you know, but but it goes to he, – he wants to stay – but I feel like he also wants his money. He's like, I, I want to stay here, but I want you guys to give me the max. Right. And I, I don't know the contract talks. If the Nets is saying, hey, we'll give you the max, but we're not going to give it to you fully guaranteed. Here's stipulations and incentives for you to get your max if you play X amount of games. And you shouldn't even have to do that for a star player. That shows you how much trouble, you know, that he is. I mean, when KD signed his deal, I don't think he had incentives. Hey, KD, will you have to play 65 games to get your 30 million plus dollars this year? You know KD's going to show up. If he's not hurt, KD's going to play for you. Yeah. So uh, Kyrie wants to stay in, in New York. Now, if he doesn't stay with the Nets, him going to the Knicks will be quite intriguing because number one is going to piss off that man over there, and two, you will have you know a little Nets and uh, <laughs> Nets and Knicks. Every time when the Knicks play the Nets, Kyrie's going to look to drop forty on their ass. I'm telling you that right now. But it's mainly I'm going to be happy to piss that man off over there if Kyrie <laughs> decides to go to the Knicks. <laughs> right, it's going to piss Kyle off so much. Right, well, <laughs> well. Hey, Listen, Kyle, hey, Kyle, you're getting a great player, though, if he decides to go to you. You're getting a very great player. I, we're getting a, we would be getting a great player if he decides to play all regular season games. And if he, <laughs> you know, if he doesn't fall, if weeks. he doesn't fall off the flat earth, you know, <laughs> and if he, you know, yeah, we'll be getting a great player. But, you know, there's a big if. Yeah. Off the flat earth. Oh, Kyrie, man, you're making me look bad. I can't I can't keep defending you no more, man. Get your shit together, brother. All right. Now, this is the last part of the segment here of the Hoops All-In Season finale. We have our best winners of the season. So if you guys have followed the Hoops All-In Instagram page, which you should, at Hoops All-In, um, we did a couple of polls in our IG story where we had categories of best flopper, we had best social media trash talker, best on court trash talker, best complainer to the refs, and Kyle will announce his all street clothes team. You don't Woo! want to miss it. So yes, yes. <laughs> all right. So here we go. Out of the categories, we had four people nominated for best flopper: Chris Paul of the Phoenix Suns, Marcus Smart of the Boston Celtics, LeBron James of the LA Lakers, and James Harden pussy um of the philadelphia Ooh. 76ers Ooh. Ooh. and <laughs> the Did winner else hear that? <laughs> i don't Ooh. know what you're talking about i call and the winner of best flopper goes to 
Marcus Smart of the Boston hey, Celtics. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he won. Oh, all right. Marcus yeah, Smart. <laughs> <laughs> the defensive player of the year is also known as the best flopper in the league, according to Hoops All in the audience. And he had some good competition. Oh, yeah, he did. Category. Yeah, he right. did. He did. Yeah, LeBron. He beat LeBron. Yeah, he beat mm-hmm. LeBron. He beat out Paul. James and he beat Harden. Out pussy James Harden. Who? <laughs> uh, okay. I um, again. I mm, all right. right. I don't know. All right. Um. Now, other category that we have. Best social media trash talker. And the nominees were Draymond Green of the current reigning 2022 NBA champions, Golden State Warriors. I know Kyle's very happy. Patrick Beverly of the (laughs) Minnesota Timberwolves slash ESPN analyst. Mm. Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets. And the (laughs) entire Memphis Grizzlies team. And the winner (laughs) of that category for best social media trash talker is... Draymond Green of the hey, 2022 yeah. NBA champions, Golden State Warriors. Congratulations, Trey. <laughs> hey, especially, yes, you, you guys, I know you guys have seen the stuff that he's been tweeting back and forth with him and John Moran. So, mm-hmm. I mean, he, he should have won this without, in a landslide. All right. Category number three for best on-court trash talker. Nominees are Draymond Green, what a surprise, of the Golden State Warriors. Patrick Beverly of the Minnesota Timberwolves, Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat, and Russell Westbrook, I mean Russell Westbrook, um, <laughs> of the LA Lakers. Winners. The winner is Draymond Green of the Golden <laughs> State Warriors. Hey, look at that. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Four, four titles and two win categories. This man is racking up W's left and right. <laughs> All right, now we have biggest complainer to the refs. Categories are not surprised again. Oh, excuse me, thank you. Nominees are not surprised again. Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors. Wow, Mm. shocking. Luka Doncic of the Dallas Mavericks. Mm. Kevin Durant of the Brooklyn Nets. And LeBron James of the LA Lakers. And the winner for best complainer to the refs. Wah. Is Wah. let's go, LeBron. Oh, Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> oh, no. I think that's a clean streak. <laughs> that is. That's a three, three in a row. Mm. Three wow. in a row. So wow. Draymond won Winners three win. straight back-to-back categories. Hmm. Who do Not we a send the trophies to? <laughs> I mean, How we could we just send them an emoji. <laughs> we can we could go on Instagram, DM them an emoji of what they mm. won with the trophy emoji, and hopefully they 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 see it and they'll respond. I'm like, yeah, congratulations! Mm. I'm like, thanks, Draymond. Mm. Uh, tune into the Hoops All In podcast on Spotify yeah. along with the Draymond Green show. <laughs> you know, he always like to point out. Oh, tune man. into the Hoops All In Spotify. Right. Hey, if he does, I, I I actually didn't say anything about him this year. So this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. All right. Now that's, we're, uh, that, right. that's our, our inaugural award season ceremony. That's yeah. that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Now for, man. Really good. Without further ado, all right, Kyle. Take we're talking away. about this for since day one, since we we were making our playoff predictions and all that good stuff and everything. And I said, you know what? The Lakers have one guy on that bench who spends a lot of time in street clothes, and I started thinking about all the other players throughout the league who do the same thing. So this is, I came up with the, (laughs) the um, all street clothes team. Yes. All right. These are the, the super, super talented players who spend more time in their street clothes and um, fashionable street wear and very high price suits (laughs) instead of on the court. Okay. Number one, Mr. Anthony Davis. Yes. Yay. Congratulations. Hey, round of applause. Confetti everywhere. <laughs> now, next is Mr. Zion Williamson. Mr. Zion yes. Williamson, come on down. Yes. Yes. Congratulations, yes. Zion. Zion, you are the man. Yes. Mr. Ben Simmons. Oh, yeah. Ben Simmons. Oh, okay. Oh. Now we talking. That's a shock. Come on down, right. Ben. 
Way to go, Ben. Way to go, Ben. You are a winner. (laughs) Mr. Udonis Haslam. Yes. Of the Miami Heat. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Which is, yeah, I mean, you know, it was tough. It was really, he kind of squeaked in because he hasn't played in like, what, a hundred years, but he still suits up. He's still ready to go, you know, and then the the philosophy is you got to stay ready. So UD, you Mm -hmm. definitely stay ready. Because yeah. you, 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 this is an honorable mention because you're really never in street clothes, but you are definitely bench bound. <laughs> <laughs> number, f- <laughs> number, number five, number five, the man of my seat. the man of the hour, Mr. Oh. Kyrie Irving. No, oh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Deserves no. it. Congrats, the, Kyrie. The, the worst kept secret in terms of being all <laughs> all street clothes team captain. Al's favorite player. <laughs> the captain. All right. And an honorable right. mention, an honorable mention goes to uh Theo Theo Pinson, who last season mm-hmm. was with the Knicks. This season was with the Dallas Mavericks. <laughs> he did not play any games with the Knicks, and I don't believe he played any games with the Mavericks, but I I, I, I want to give him not only oh honorable mention in this category, but a special asterisk uh, and, and mention in terms of being in his own lane, which would be probably one of the best bench cheerleaders in yes. the league. The guy who doesn't go. get off the bench, most likely won't suit up, but is mm-hmm. there to cheer on his teammates. So mm-hmm. that goes to Mr. Theo Pinson. You're in your own lane, Theo. All right. Congrats. Yeah. Wow. Congrats to all our winners. Interesting. I like I like I like that. I awesome. like that. That was an awesome yeah. segment. Yeah. <laughs> Even if Kyle ever leaves the show, he's got to come back just to do that segment. Like <laughs> hey, you know, that's all right. My my the segment travels, so it's okay. I will definitely <laughs> that was classic. I can't disagree with anybody on that team. Same. Same. I can't. That was that was a really good solid roster, man. Put it yes. together well. Thank you, man. I think they're gonna win the bench wars uh, this year. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> oh, you know what? The the walk, the the tunnel walk. That that, that yeah, <laughs> that'll, that'll probably that, that'll be good. Yeah. Uh, like a high fashion tunnel. They'll do walk. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are oh, you going oh, to the locker room? Oh yeah, but I won't. I'm just gonna hang out there. I'm not gonna suit up. Let me show you what I let me show you what I picked up this week at Fashion Week. <laughs> oh God. So <laughs> hey, you know oh, what? No. Some oh. players, some players go to their team doctors a lot. Some players go to their tailors. Or their or their 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 uh their stylists, I should say. Get endorsed. <laughs> Oh anyway. man! All right, I can't wait to keep right. this segment going on with more hoops all in episodes. This yeah, is fun. this is good. This is Kyle good. would be a great GM in the NBA. He would be a great. GM I think the, the players NBA. would like him. I, I wish I. I hope I get that chance. <laughs> I really, I really would like that. A side gig, you know. If I can get in, if I can be a GM for like you know maybe forty-one games, like you know Kyrie plays, then uh, you know I think I'll mm. be. I'd have to. Oh be a GM more than these guys play, though. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Well, he's going to have to balance two jobs, president of a multimedia Call company me. and uh, <laughs> GM of an NBA who needs, team. Who is it? Hey, hey, any openings, give me a call. I'm here. Right. right. Any openings? I also do pep talks. Pep talks. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that was classic. Oh, Lord. That was classic. <laughs> That was funny. That was funny. All right, Kyle. Thanks for giving us that good, that good segment. Appreciate it, man. (laughs) All right, guys. And I can't believe the time has come. It is time to say goodbye with the NBA season wrapping up. We're done as well, too. But just momentarily, we have NBA free agency coming up and the NBA draft coming up. So Hoops All In will have a special edition episode for that. And we'll be back full time again, giving you this great basketball podcast in October when the NBA season wraps up. So this is goodbye for now, but we will be back just like the inside NBA, the inside, uh, inside the NBA TNT group. You know, also, we just need if we got to do that 
He's Charles Barkley. I'm Kenny. No, Kane is Charles Barkley. Oh, damn. <laughs> First of all, I can win a foot race. <laughs> but not to mention, we'll be back, guys, um, once the season starts again. We'll have an episode here and there, talk about the draft, free agency, all that good stuff. So, no, just goodbye for now. But follow the page on IG at Hoops All In. We'll be keeping up with some NBA moves, um, some trades, any, you know, future coaches change, stuff like that. So stay up to the page. Follow it on Twitter and Instagram. So this episode was sponsored by Exceptional Life Fitness. Go follow them at on Instagram at exceptional underscore life underscore fitness. Was produced by Rain Multimedia. As always, go check them out on Instagram at Rain Multimedia. Subscribe to their YouTube channel at Rain Multimedia as well, where you get catch a video version of this podcast on their channel. Subscribe, like it up, share all the videos. And as always, this episode... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crying. You're crying. He's You're cutting crying. up onions. He's cutting up onions. <laughs> and as always, broadcasting rights as well to you to catch Hoops All In on World TV. Follow the show on Instagram at Hoops All In, Twitter at Hoops All In underscore. And for one last goodbye of the 2021 2022 75th anniversary NBA season. And our well, inaugural premiere season. Inaugural, too. Yeah. Inaugural. Yeah. We will be back as well. We will be back for the. Uh, 2020, 2022, 2023 season. So don't miss out for that. I'm Worlds Francois, Kyle Anthony, Kane Legacy, Hoops All In, signing out for the final time. Congratulations once again to the Golden State Warriors for winning the NBA title. We can't wait to see who captures the Larry O'Brien trophy next season. All right. See you guys next time. Stay safe. Peace. Peace.